Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you everything you need to know about book journaling in GoodNotes. I'm really excited for this video. I've been planning it for a while, but in this video, I'm just gonna be sharing with you basically some tips and tricks about using GoodNotes when it comes to having a reading journal and how I personally like to use my reading journal in GoodNotes. And also I'm releasing a bookish sticker pack, which I'm so proud of and happy that I'm finally releasing it. It's filled with all types of bookish stickers, which I really hope you guys enjoy using. So yeah, I'll have a link in the description where you can go get that for yourself, but I'll be also sharing in this video how I use the stickers in my reading journal. So yeah, I'm really excited and I hope you are too, so let's get started. Before I go into my reading journal and cover how I go about book journaling, I just want to quickly share with you what book journaling is. So it's basically just a place where you can add and review all the books that you've already read. So I'm just doing, showing an example of my reading journal of last year. This is what it looks like, so I did this in GoodNotes as well, um, and you just add in the books and then you can also write a little review for that book with all the information about the book and your quotes and whatever for that book so it's a nice thing to be able to look back on I've also done it in different ways so you have good notes there but you can also do it in notion I actually do it in both I prefer notion for some things and good notes for other things but here you can see an example of what that would look like in notion and then again I can just go in and add in all the details of the book as well as a little review for that book. So as you can see, book journaling is very subjective to what you prefer. I will have a link in the description for that Notion template if you're interested in getting that. I got it from a website called Graffiti. I really love it, so I will have that linked. So yeah, as for book journals I've used, like I said, I used the Notion one and I used this one here in GoodNotes. This is just a reading journal that I got off of Etsy. I highly recommend going on Etsy and finding book journals on there as well if you don't like the ones that I'm sharing with you in this video. There are so many different ones with different information that you can add and different styles. This is just the one that I, like I said, used last year. And I really just liked it because it's very minimal. It has this little index here at the side where you can just quickly go to different pages and things like that. Now the reading journal that I'm using this year is from a creator called Paper and Roses. You've seen me use her planner in my plan with me's, but she brought out a reading journal. So this is the one here. I just created my own custom little cover image for my reading journal, but you can use the one that comes with the planner, really up to you. Um, but then also this is kind of the same layout where you also have like an index with all of the little pages that you can go to. So this is really helpful in book journals just because you have so many different pages and templates. But the basic layout of a reading journal usually is just your little index page. Then you also usually have these tabs here at the side so you can quickly switch between those pages from any place in your journal. So then you usually have your library where all your books are that you can add reviews for. So just a quick view of all the books that you have in your library. A lot of times it also has some series trackers. So this one links to a series tracker if you want to add that. And then obviously you have your library which links to all the review pages where you can go ahead and fill out an entire review for a certain book. Now this reading journal that I have here also has some monthly pages which uh, I don't think most reading journals have this but it is a nice touch especially if you want to combine I think like a planner with a reading journal this could also be a nice way of doing that um, so you have some monthly pages here I will share with you a bit later how I've been using the monthly pages for my reading journal and yeah that's basically it and it's just all really nice that it's hyperlinked and you can easily just switch between all the different pages if you're newish to GoodNotes and you're not sure how to use hyperlinks it's really easy if you're in GoodNotes, you probably have it where it has this blue bar at the top with all your pen tools and everything, but that is the one view you can be in to use your hyperlink. So then to use a hyperlink, you just hold down on that link and then tap on open link. So that's one way of doing it. Or what you can do is you just tap on the pen icon here at the top so that that blue bar goes away. So now you're in the reading mode. So now whatever hyperlink you click on, it's gonna be going to that link immediately. So that's also a way you can access hyperlinks. So now that you kind of have an idea of what a reading journal looks like and the basic layout of it, I think it's a good point to start actually doing the reading journaling. So the first thing I wanna cover is adding in new books and how I go about that. So in GoodNotes, GoodNotes has so many different tips and features that you can use. I'm not gonna be doing like an entire in-depth video on GoodNotes in this video. I've done beginner guides and tips and tricks videos for GoodNotes, which I will link if you want some more information about GoodNotes specifically. But what I'm gonna be covering is just how I go about reading 
journaling or book journaling in GoodNotes and how I apply all those things in my reading journal. So yeah, like I said, the first thing we're gonna be covering is adding in new books and how I do that. Um, this is what that looks like. So this is just an image that I import. And as you can see, mine has some rounded corners. That's just my preference. So I'll be sharing with you how I do that, but that is heavily based on preference. If you're fine with the sharp corners, that's also great. So basically how you go about this is I usually just go into Safari and search for the book that I want to review. So this is going to be the last book that I read. And what you can do then is you can just hold down on that image and then just click on copy and then go to good notes, hold down and paste. And then that is in your reading journal and you can just put that over the box that they usually include in reading journals for a space. So that's the one way you can go about it. Another thing you can do, which is also really easy, is just to go into split view. So I'm gonna do this with my iPad in portrait, but obviously you can turn your iPad sideways, which is probably easier. So as you can see here in split view, I have Safari on the one side and GoodNotes on the other side. So then you just hold down on that image and drag that over into GoodNotes. And that's also a way to just quickly add in the image into the app. You can obviously also just hold down and click on save to photo and just have it in your camera roll but I don't want my camera roll to just be full of all the books covers so that's why I just usually just copy and paste so it doesn't take up an unnecessary space in my photo library now as for how I get the rounded corner effect this has a few extra steps but I just really like the look of it and it's just like once in a while that I do this when I finished a book it's not like I'm doing them in bulk but how I go about this is again I just go to get the book cover and what I do is I copy Copy it and then I go into procreate as you can see I've already created the basic shape for that so now all I need to do in procreate is go to this little gear icon and paste in that image and size that to the shape then in the layers panel here I just create a clipping mask meaning that it will take the form of the shape beneath it and then I just go ahead and export that as a PNG meaning it has no background it just has the shape and then I just click on copy and then I just paste that into GoodNotes. So it, the first time you do this, it's gonna probably be a few steps just to get the shape and everything. But once you've already have that shape, all you need to do then is just every time paste in the image. Here you can see in my layers panel in this document, this is where I've added all of them in here. So every time I just add in the image, it's already and a clipping mask and then I just fit it to the shape and copy and paste it into GoodNotes. Now this is if you have Procreate. I know not everyone has Procreate. It's an app that you need to pay for. So I've created a template in Canva, which is free that you can use to get this effect. So all I did in Canva was add in one of these frames. So if you're not familiar with Canva, you have these frames where you can just drop an image and it will fill up that little block. Um, so for instance, I'm gonna go to my images and add that image to my shape like that. Now, if you wanna save this, I've added it so that it only has these little white corners, which is fine if you're gonna add it to your reading journal. Because if you didn't know, if you're gonna wanna save an image with a transparent background from Canva, you're gonna need Canva Pro, which costs money. So I just folded the shape exactly to the size um, and with just these little borders so that it doesn't look too weird when it has those because the background of your reading journal is probably gonna be white, so you're not even gonna see it. So then you just download that as an image to your iPad or whatever. And then you can also just click on copy and paste that into GoodNotes and it's the exact same thing. All you can see it has those little borders there. But like I said, since you have like a white background, you can't even see that those corners are there. You can just fit that to the shape of the book just like that. So if you wanna get that, I will have that linked in the description. Um, I know this was a long portion just to explain how to get rounded corners, but I just wanted to share that in case you were interested. So yeah, that was a whole explanation of just adding in a cover image, but that really just makes it look really cool for me. Then the next step is just adding in my name of my book. So I use text for this. So that's a big tip also. If you don't like your handwriting in GoodNotes, you can use the scribble, meaning it transforms your handwriting into text. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write here the do-over. 
and that is gonna transform my handwriting into text. And then the font that I use, I will also have linked in the description. I get a lot of questions about it. It's called the handwriting font just because it looks kind of like handwriting, but I use the first font in that font bundle um, for my titles. So that is how I go about adding in the title of my books. And then the next step is adding in the rating, which I have created an element for this, meaning that I first time I did the rating in this reading journal is I used the highlighter tool and I colored in this little star with the smallest highlighter size possible and just fill that in a lot neater than I'm doing right now. As I used the lasso tool, I selected that and I just selected add element, meaning that I can save it to the element section, which is basically where you save stickers or things you wanna reuse in GoodNotes. So I just saved it to an element section. So now every time I don't have to try to fill that in perfectly, I can just reuse the one that I've already created and add that into my writing. It's already the right size and everything. So that is another tip I have for you. Make sure you utilize using elements just because it saves you a lot of time, especially with things you know you're gonna redo often. It's just way easier to just have that as already saved and you can just add it in every time. So that is what I did for my rating. Obviously you can do whatever you want if you just wanna make like a little blob of color over it, that is also your choice. Then next we're gonna again use our hyperlinks. I'm just gonna go into the reading mode and go in there and start my book review. I'm not gonna fill this out entirely on video. I'm just gonna share with you the basics, but the summary and everything I will do afterwards. So again, the first thing I do have to do is add in the image. From here, I just usually copy this and I just paste it into this little block here, just like that. And the same goes for the star rating, I just use the elements that I created and fill in my rating. Now for the actual review section where I add everything in, as you can see, I've already added in some details. I usually do this with my pen tool. I just like the feeling of writing out my reviews. Um, so I don't usually use the text tool for this, but what I do use is stickers for the genre section. So I just, like I said, I've created sticker packs. So I just use the labels that I've created in this sticker pack. As you can see, here are some different genres. So this one was just a romance. So then I just paste that in here just like that so then that is there so here are examples of previous book reviews that i did as you can see they all have different styles um, the quotes i sometimes also like to make in color just to add some color to the reviews i will also add in images of the hex codes that i use meaning the colors that i have saved in my color palettes that i always use i know a lot of people have asked me about what my hex codes are that i use and also if you don't know what how to use hex codes you can see there's a little number code at the bottom of each color you just go to custom and paste that into this little section that says hex and add that to your presets and then you have that or another thing you can also do which is really helpful to get the color that you want is to just go to custom and here you see the little eyedropper tool and then just drag that over the color that you want to pick up on your document, which is also really helpful. Then the next step for my review is adding in the method that I did my reading. So that I also do with my stickers. I'm gonna go with a pink pack. So here are the stickers. So these are stickers that you can add on the corner. So for instance, this book I read from the library, but actually it was a digital library, so Libby. So I'm just gonna quickly copy library and paste that into the corner of my book. And usually I just make it a bit smaller and add that in to the corner so it looks like that. And then also I can go ahead and add in how I borrowed it. So usually this would be Libby, so I'm gonna copy this and usually I just add that in here um, on the corner just because my reading journal doesn't have a space for this a lot of reading journals do actually have a space where you can select if it was an ebook a physical book a library book um, but mine just doesn't so then I just add that little image to kind of indicate how I read it. Then the next step is actually adding in the favorite quote. So if you go to this page here, you'll see in my reading journal, it has a section where it says favorite quote. I forgot that I actually covered that up, <laughs> a white piece. So how I did that is I just selected my lasso tool and I just made a circle on a blank space, which is white. And then I tapped on that and selected take screenshot and I just copied that. And then I pasted it in and I made it the size that I wanted to cover up that piece just because I have a sticker that I wanna use for here. Um, so that is something that you can do as well to cover any parts of your 
journals that you don't want or obviously you can just use a white pen but I just find that really easy so then I'm just gonna go here and just find the favorite quote sticker I know I'm using my bookish sticker pack but obviously you don't have to use stickers for this you can just fill out your reading journal the way you want so I'm gonna go with this one and paste that in here also want to show you if I added in the little block here after the sticker it would have been over top of it so what you can do then to send that backwards so that you can have this sticker to the front all you need to do is select that image and then click on arrange and click on send to back so that's how you can arrange different layers in GoodNotes which is really helpful if you add it in something in the wrong order. You can just quickly do the arrange hack. Also, what I wanna show you is this book journal of mine has some few extra features for book reviews that are actually just templates here in the index, you can see it. Here it says bookish review folder, and then it has some other pages that you can copy and paste the book you wanna review it for. So for instance, you have here book notes, which looks like this. So if you have some additional notes and then also book mood board. So that is what I used for this book here and also the previous one. So I added, I just did my normal review and added everything in, but then I also added in some book notes with some more quotes that I want to remember because this book had some really good quotes. And then also I added in a mood board with images off of Pinterest. So this is also something fun you can do in your book journals. And I don't do this for every single book, just books that I really love liked and wanted to do this for. So this one also just had a few extra things that I wanted to add, so I also used those. Um, so that is also something you can do. Also, just to show you how to use like templates like this is you just go to the template that you want. So maybe you just wanna make a mood board. And what do you do then is you just click on the three dots and select copy page. And now let's go to a book that I wanna add a book mood board for. So maybe yours truly. Then what I can do is I just click on the plus button here and instead of choosing one of these templates, you just select paste page and you can choose where you want to add that page to. If you want to add it to the page after the page that you're now on to the last page of your book journal or before this page. So mine is going to be on after you just click on paste page and they will add that afterwards. So that's just how you can use templates in book journals and how you can add them to where you want them to be. So yeah, that is using templates in book journals. Now, just to quickly show you, I'm not going to go into depth about this, but how I use the monthly trackers. Now, I believe this is supposed to be like how you plan for your reading month, but I'm very much a mood reader, so I don't really go by what I plan out to. So what I've done is I just add in when I read a book and how basically how many days I read that book. And I just add that into the calendar here. And these are undated, meaning that you can use them in any year um, and just add in the dates. So that is what I've done here. So yeah, I just add in that. And then at the end of every month, I usually add in the books that I've read. This is a TBR section, but like I said, I don't really have TBRs. So I just usually add in the books that I read that month and then the vibes of those books. I don't really do this before the month starts. I do this at the end. And then I've added in these reading trackers. So if I go to my sticker packs here, I just created these little reading trackers with 15 books. So I can use this in monthly setups or yearly setups, whatever it is. But then I just use those. And I've also created these little book stickers, which indicate physical books. But then I just copy those and paste them over that tracker to indicate when a book was read. So I, that's what I do every month to kind of track the amount of books I read in a visual way. I just do that with this reading tracker and those books. So this was last month uh, where I read some books, I added some stickers and the vision board for the books that I read. So that is how I use the monthly pages. Obviously, if you're more of a planned reader, you can fill this out what you're planning to do and have a TBR, but this is just the best fit for me. So this is April, at the end of April, I can fill this in with all the books that I've read. And also if I've started reading a book, which this month is kind of a slumpy month, I have not really finished a book, but then I can also add that in here. I must say the mood board is quite fun. I just go on Pinterest and save the images to my camera roll and add them in here in a little collage. Now, the last thing I wanna share with you is using stickers in GoodNotes and the different ways you can use stickers. So the first one is obviously just to drag and drop images from your camera roll, but that's not really stickers, that's just adding in images like I already showed you. You just drag over the Photos app into Split View and then you can just easily throw them over 
or also you can just use the image tool built into GoodNotes. Here you can see all the latest images in your camera roll where you can tap anywhere and then that will also bring up your camera roll. Also another thing you can use is elements like I already mentioned. So here you can see elements have different things that you can do with them. You can either import images into a new collection. So this is where you create a new collection and add images or things that you're gonna often reuse in GoodNotes and you can add them in here in a collection so that you always have access to them within the app. So that's really helpful. And also what I've done for my calendars here is I also use the text, not like writing it out. So having to do that every time takes a lot of time. So all I have to do now is I just tap and I just click on the ones that I already set out. So I just made all of them here and added them as elements. So now all I have to do is drag that over to the first day of the month and then I can just fill that out that way using the elements tool. So yeah, I highly recommend using elements if you haven't noticed. Another thing you can do is like the sticker packs that I am releasing. I have set them out in either individual images like that you can save to photos or sticker sheets or element collections. So then you just save that collection to GoodNotes and then it's there for you to use. Here you can see in files, this is what the collection of elements looks like. So you just tap on it and then just select share and add to GoodNotes. And then it shows you the entire collection. All you need to do then is just click on create and it will save it to your element section. So yeah, you can add collections from other creators into your little element section as well. So yeah, like I mentioned, I created sticker sheets. So just to show you the sticker sheets that I made, I haven't even shown you yet. So I created two sets. One is pink and red and the other one is I think green and brown, I guess. So this is what they look like. So these are sticker sheets, meaning that these are images that are already cropped to the sizes and you can just tap with the image tool, tap on those and copy them and paste them into your documents. But this is an already made GoodNotes document that you can just copy and paste in between your different journals and notebooks that you've created. So yeah, these are the sticker sheets for the pink and red pack. And these are the stickers in the green and brown pack. They're all ready for you to just copy and paste throughout GoodNotes. So yeah, I'm really happy with the sticker packs, but that is how you also can use sticker sheets to copy and paste between different documents. Then another option you can do is what I also love to do is using Procreate. So Procreate has a lot of creative brushes and things. So, or just like I did with the cover image and you just create whatever you want in Procreate and then just copy and paste that into GoodNotes. If you want to be a bit more, be a bit more artsy or create your own little graphics, you can go ahead and do that in Procreate and then just paste that into GoodNotes. Also with the Photos app, there are some cool things that you can do. So for instance, with this little image here, if I wanted to just select the waffle and the coffee mug, which is the subject of this image. So whatever subject is in your image, you can just hold down and it will create this little effect and then you can just drag that over and then you kind of have your own little created sticker which is really cute so you can do that for creating your own little stickers from photos or what you can also do is hold down and then click on add sticker so then it will be saved in this little sticker section on your ipad you can also add some effects so they have some cute little different effects that you can have here as you can see i usually like the outline one so now in Good notes. If I go to the text tool and I open up my emoji keyboard, here are all the stickers that I have. I can click here to create, open up all the stickers. And then I can also just go ahead and drag and drop that into good notes and use those here as well. And it has that cool little effect that we added which is really nice. So that's how you can create your own little stickers using just photos in your camera roll. I usually find these cute little images off of Pinterest. I mean, you can do this with literally any image. It doesn't have to be like a graphic. If I just wanted to have this camera in this photo, I could hold down and create a sticker from that or drag that into GoodNotes. So I guess that is all I wanted to cover on stickers. It's just a really nice way to spruce up your reading journals or whatever journal you have. I really, really recommend it. So yeah, I guess that was reading journaling in a nutshell. I hope I helped you out and you learned some tips and tricks for GoodNotes. It's really such a fun thing to do and it's really nice when you start to see your library with all the different book covers come together. Um, 
and all the different things you can add to it. So that was everything I wanted to share with you guys about using a reading journal in GoodNotes. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and found some tips and tricks that can help you out. Again, I will have the sticker sheets linked in the description if you want to go get it for yourself. I'm really happy with how they turned out and I really hope you guys enjoy them as well. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!